Greetings all. I am Cavity No One. Thank you for joining me. Today I will be going over the eight layers of the RuneScape iceberg. Each layer is filled with several interesting topics that you may or may not know about the world of RuneScape. As we go down the list, the topics will become more and more obscure. Without further ado, I present to you. <laughs> Sea Shanty 2 doesn't need much of an explanation. It's arguably one of the most popular tracks in all of RuneScape. The track unlocks in Port Sarum and is composed by Ian Taylor, who wrote many of the songs within RuneScape. While we're on the topic of Ian Taylor, in 2021, he was sentenced 22 months in prison for underage assault of a preteen girl. When questioned by the police, Taylor confessed, acknowledging his actions were inappropriate and claiming he was intoxicated and depressed at the time. Buying GF or buying girlfriend is a long-running joke throughout the RuneScape community where a person is advertising that they're interested in purchasing a girlfriend within RuneScape. There were a good handful of players that had in-game girlfriends. I had like 20. But many people speculated that they were actually men pretending to be women to scam people for gold or other items. The Duel Arena was introduced on March 25th, 2004. It was located in Alcarid and was a site where players could engage in 1v1 combat. Players could stake gold and other items and the winner would take home the prize. It was determined that the Duel Arena was the source of 38% of bans related to real world trading. In 2022, it was removed from the game entirely. In old school RuneScape, it was replaced with Amir's Arena, also known as the Alcarid PvP Arena. In RuneScape 3, however, it was replaced with Hez Oasis, which is a skilling area for agility, farming, and hunting activities. The evolution of combat, or EOC, was an update in 2012 that completely modified RuneScape's combat system. This update brought along a variety of new content, including powerful abilities, dual wielding weapons, new abilities for monsters, and much, much more. Hello, my name's Modmark, and I'm the lead designer of RuneScape. And I'm here to tell you why the evolution of combat is the greatest thing ever to happen to the game that we know and love so well, RuneScape. EOC is described as one of the biggest and most controversial updates in RuneScape history. The Gnome Child was added to RuneScape in an update in 2002 and can be found in the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Around 2014, the Gnome Child became a huge meme across the internet. The Gnome Child is actually the Dank Memes logo on Reddit as of the posting of this video. During Old School RuneScape's 7th anniversary event, the Gnome Child said some really weird stuff. The door will finally open. A body lies within. So many symbols. So many signs. After doing some research, the 2020 anniversary event had absolutely nothing to do with the gnome child or anything he had to say. He was just there. Zezima is perhaps the biggest RuneScape celebrity of all time. Zezima, I'm your biggest fan. I know all about you, but you know who I am. Name Ball. He was the highest ranked player for most of 2004 through 2007. He was the first person to achieve 99 Slayer, and by doing so, became the first player to have level 99 in all skills. During RuneFest 2013, Jagex awarded him the Golden Gnome Award, which is an award that recognizes members of the RuneScape community. Zezima, ugh. Zezima revealed on his Twitch channel in 2015 that he has over 1,600 days worth of RuneScape. And after doing the math, and by math, I mean plugging it into Google and letting it do the work for me, it adds up to 40,000 hours or four and a half years in RuneScape. Atlas and Meridian are the names of the two lizard creatures that surround the minimap on the user interface in fixed screen mode. In geography, the Meridian is an imaginary line that runs from the North Pole to the South Pole. Not only is Atlas a book of maps, but in Greek mythology, Atlas was a titan god condemned to hold the sky and heavens upon his shoulders, while in RuneScape, Atlas must, in a way, hold the world up. You're suffering from poison damage, and fortunately for you, 
You have anti-poison right here in your inventory. Did you know that instead of clicking on your anti-poison, you can also click on your health icon to automatically consume a dose of your anti-poison? While we're talking about anti-poison, have you ever wondered why anti-poison is a free-to-play item? However, there is no possible way to achieve poison damage on free-to-play worlds. Anti-poison was made available on free-to-play when Bryophyta was released. She was intended to be the first poisonous free-to-play monster. However, the idea to make her deal poison damage on free-to-play worlds was scrapped, making anti anti-poisons completely useless and free to play. The doubling money scam is a pretty common trust trade scam that scammers use to steal other players hard earned gold. If you've played RuneScape, it's very likely that you have encountered doublers around the Grand Exchange. The scammer will usually say something like, Hey guys, I'm doubling money! Until a victim approaches them, hoping to get some extra gold. The victim will trade an amount of money to the scammer, then the trade will be accepted. And this is typically when the scammer... logs off. The at symbol is primarily used for spamming the chat within RuneScape. The at symbol is the perfect symbol for spamming due to its large size. It's common to see the symbol being spammed to build hype while waiting in a lobby for a minigame or if someone has maxed their account. In addition, to change the color of your text in RuneScape Classic, the at symbol would be placed before and after a specific three letter code. For example, at symbol red at symbol would change your text to the color red. There was also light red, dark red, orange, dark orange, orange one, orange two, orange three, yellow, green, dark green, 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 blue, dark blue, 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 cyan, dark cyan, magenta, black, white, and random. An old school bond is an item that allows players to pay for membership on their account. Bonds can never be dropped on the ground, destroyed in your inventory, alchemized with magic, or sold in shops such as general stores. They can, however, be purchased with real world money directly from the RuneScape website or purchased in game with coins from the Grand Exchange. One bond is worth 14 days of RuneScape membership and can be purchased from the Grand Exchange for around 9 million gold. They can even be traded with other players for coins or other items. This has created some controversy on whether or not a bond is considered a microtransaction. Old school RuneScape is known for not having microtransactions, such as cosmetics in RuneScape 3. What are your opinions? Are bonds a microtransaction? Let me know in the comments. The Falador Massacre was one of the most major glitches that occurred within RuneScape on June 6, 2006, giving it the nickname, The 666 Glitch. It all began when Cursed You, the first player to achieve 99 construction, hosted a party in his player-owned house on World 111. Due to the large number of players within the house, the lag was so severe that the host was forced to boot everyone out. <laughs> Players who were actively engaged in combat activities inside the house, including Duriel321, somehow retained the ability to attack other players anywhere within RuneScape, even outside of PvP areas. Most of the players that obtained this ability took advantage of it by brutally massacring other players in crowded cities spreading from Falador, Edville, Remington, and even Drainer Village. This was a major violation of the bug abuse rule. The poor, unsuspecting victims could not retaliate. <laughs> The murders lasted for almost an hour before Jagex moderators were notified. After the bug was fixed, Jagex permanently banned many players, so uh... The Falador Massacre has officially been recognized as a historical event that actually occurred in Gylenor's history. On RuneScape 3, there was a plaque located at Falador Park dedicated to the ones that lost their lives during the Falador Massacre. Grand Canaria is one of Spain's Canary Islands known for its white, sandy beaches. Looking at the island on a map, the island closely resembles a specific item in RuneScape. Can you guess what it is? That's right! The island is almost completely identical to the shape of cabbage. Nah, I'm just kidding. What you're looking at is an island almost identical to the shape of the granite shield. It doesn't seem to be confirmed whether or not the shield was modeled after the island, but the shapes, without a doubt, heavily resemble one another. In old school RuneScape, it is possible to obtain a member's object despite being free to play. In Lumbridge Swamp, you can use a knife on the spiny bush to receive a branch, which is shown as a member's object. These branches are used for temple trekking in members' worlds all the way over in Mauritania. So why is this bush here in the first place? 
Examining a haystack will tell you, I bet there's a needle in there somewhere. And they weren't lying, because there's actually a 1 in 10 chance you'll find a needle in the haystack by searching it. Pretty funny, Jagex. Pretty funny. Venezuela was once one of the richest countries in South America, but has spent the last 10 years in an economic crisis. 90% of Venezuelans are living in poverty and earning little to no income. That's where RuneScape comes in. Gold farming in RuneScape has become a mainstream method of earning money in Venezuela. For those that are unfamiliar with the term, gold farming is essentially accumulating vast amounts of in-game gold and selling it for real money through third-party websites, which of course is against the rules. In an interview, former accountant named Martinez stated that his monthly salary had reached as low as $4 a month. Once he discovered how to make real money through RuneScape, he was able to earn nearly $1,500, which he used to flee him and his family from Venezuela to Peru. In 2019, Venezuela's electricity network collapsed and almost the entire country was left without power. No power means no RuneScape. This single-handedly caused an economic crisis within RuneScape. Heavily farmed items in the game quickly became scarce and prices increased drastically. WhiteCat22, also known as a friend on YouTube, is a famous RuneScape player who received the Golden Gnome Award during RuneFest 2013. The winner for the Best Guide Award goes to a Razor Gaming or a friend. Shortly after the release of Hardcore Iron Man mode, he became well known for his high stats and his ability to avoid death. He continuously posted videos on YouTube to highlight his progress. Almost a year of playing on his Hardcore Iron Man account, his character was killed in a battle with the deranged archaeologist, which was a new boss that was released with the Fossil Island update. Cow31337 Killer, or Cow Elite Killer, is an NPC that has the appearance of a player that can be spotted throughout RuneScape. His combat level is 123, though you cannot attack him. You may have seen him if you completed the Animal Magnetism quest. This quote unquote player was also present for the 2017 and 2018 birthday events in RuneScape. It was pretty lit, you should have been there. The 31337 in his name means Elite in Elite Speak, making his name Cow Elite Killer. There is a one-way agility shortcut on the north wall of Yanil that has no agility requirement, no indication on the minimap, and no animation when using it. And it's literally right next to the actual agility shortcut. I have no idea why this is here, but I thought it was interesting nonetheless. There is a level 2 rabbit that lives in a cave in the Gwyneth Hunter area. Oh wait, wrong rabbit. Th this, this is the right rabbit. He's still kinda cute, I guess. But don't let his combat level fool you, because it has a whopping 2,000 hit points, which is equivalent to the Corporal Beast. And on top of that, it has a max hit of 40 and has a really high attack speed. Based on the rabbit's combat stats, it should have a combat level of 872. Sailing was originally put forward as a new free-to-play skill in 2015. It would consist of three main activities, exploration, navigation, and shipbuilding. There was also talk about having cannons on the ship for PvP combat. A poll ran for six days, resulting in a 68% yes to 32% no ratio, failing to reach the 75% requirement to pass. However, the idea was revived in 2023 and a new poll was created. Sailing passed the poll and will be added to the game at a future date. In RuneScape 3, a rock can be found by the stream between Edgeville and the Grand Exchange. This rock can be used as a range to cook food. Upon cooking on the rock, a text will appear saying, Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Which is a reference to Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Botany Bay was a location added in an update in 2012. Here, players could choose a punishment for bot accounts through a court system. People of the court, I call upon you to pass judgment. To attend a trial, trial announcers could be found in the banks of some of the major cities. There were three types of punishments for the bots. Crushed by a claw of justice, swallowed by an abyssal worm, and incineration. Although this is a fun and interesting concept, Botany Bay was sadly removed in August of 2018. 
The second floor of Vorok banks are notorious for people engaging in real world trading. There's no real purpose for anyone to go up there, which creates a safe and private location for doing so. After purchasing gold from a third party website, more often than not, the seller will ask you to meet them on the second floor of one of the two Vorok banks. Vorok, Varric, whatever you want to call it. I call it Vorok. People call me out on it all the time. It's not Vorok, it's Vera. <clears throat> Anyways. Spaghetti code is a term for code that is unstructured or difficult to maintain. The term has become disliked by RuneScape players and developers alike, as this was often given as a reason why we haven't seen certain updates or reworks in the game. RuneScape is old, therefore has a lot of old code, and if the code is not planned accordingly, it could lead to future issues. You know, we, we do have spaghetti code in the game, right? You know, a game that's been running for, <laughs> for 20 years has spaghetti code. The Rotten Potato was introduced at RuneFest 2010 and is only available to Jagex moderators. By using the potato, they are able to access various moderator tools. The potato can be used to teleport to another player. It can max level a user, setting all of their skills to 99 or higher. You see, I mean, I don't know what everyone complains about taking too long to level. It's easy. It can even transform you into an NPC or an object. What these are, theoretically, we can add any, any creature to this, so it can turn into anything. Arpasandra is a hidden city of gnomes located under the Galarpas Mountains. When translated, this means Rock City. Arpasandra was founded by a gnome named Glufri after he was banished from the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Arpasandra is now led by Glauk. It is believed that Glauk had overthrown Glufri. Their relation is unknown, however Glauk refuses Glufri's name to be mentioned anywhere throughout Arpasandra and severely punishes anyone who speaks of his name. If you've ever been to the Gnome Stronghold or the Tree Gnome Village, you've probably come across one of these creatures. How would you describe it? Maybe... Cute and cuddly! Well, if you take a look on the inside... Arpasandra gnomes sent these evil creatures, disguised as cute creatures, to the gnome stronghold in the tree gnome village. These creatures were so cute that the gnomes couldn't help but to allow the creatures in. This allowed the Arpasandra gnomes to spy on daily activities of the other gnomes, mainly those of political and military stature. Hans is an NPC located in Lumbridge. He was added to RuneScape on January 4th, 2001. His primary purpose is to tell players how long they've spent playing on the RuneScape account. Hans can be found walking in circles around the Lumbridge Castle courtyard. The question is, how many laps has Hans made around Lumbridge Castle? Well, thankfully a user on Reddit did all the math for us. They timed 35 trials of Hans walking around Lumbridge Castle. With this, we discovered that one lap equals 56.19 seconds. Since the day he was implemented into the game, and the date the observation was recorded on January 13th, 2021, there have been 632,016,000 seconds. Dividing this by the 56.19 seconds per lap, we get that Hans has made 11,247,838 laps around the castle. That's a lot of calories. But what if Hans was stationary at some point in time? I couldn't find any sources stating that he was stationary, unless you count the fact that he stops walking whenever a player speaks to him. But while he may be stopped in one world, he continues to walk in all of the other worlds. We're also not going to take into account all the times that Jagex had to shut down RuneScape for maintenance. There's just way too much math involved to discover how many laps Hans has made in the, the Hans multiverse. We should all know the classic buying girlfriend quote from RuneScape. But what is actually buying girlfriend? I have no clue. I tried doing research on this topic, but I couldn't find much of anything. I did, however, find this custom 3D printed RuneScape wedding cake topper on Etsy. Buy it now because they're selling fast. It's possible that this is referring to the people who have actually met their significant others through RuneScape. If so, there are several instances of this happening. Some of it is even documented on YouTube. We've been friends for over a year and a half. We've been dating for over seven months, 
and we've never actually met in person until today. My girlfriend's gonna be here. Her name? This is this is Kara, by the way. That's her name. You may have asked yourself, what's so special about burnt food? Nothing, actually. There's nothing special about burnt food. So why are people wanting to buy it? It may seem like a mundane item, but burnt food is actually more uncommon than you may think. When you progress from level 1 to 99 cooking, you begin to burn food less and less, making it more difficult to obtain. The lower leveled foods are the most rare, items such as shrimp, sardine, and bread. It also can't be sold at the Grand Exchange, making it that much harder to get. Burnt food has become very popular within the collecting community. Odablock is a legendary RuneScape streamer and content creator. He's well known for his intense high-risk PvP battles and his explosive personality. Odablock would receive in-game gold from his loyal Twitch viewers to gamble or stake during PvP battles. Things took a turn when he kept losing, and losing, and losing until he lost all of his viewers' gold and became 258 billion gold in debt. This is equivalent to around $300,000 worth of RuneScape membership bonds. Odablock had two choices. He could either A, not pay his fans back and throw away his internet career, or B, find a way to make 258 billion coins and pay everybody back. And that's exactly what he did. Odoblock spent many, many hours competing on PvP worlds to pay off his debt. This was such a stressful time for Odoblock, so stressful that he actually began to lose his hair. And eventually, Odoblock fought his last battle that officially made him debt free. This, this, is, this is my favorite RuneScape song. This one. Bones to Peaches is a spell in the standard spellbook that, uh, turns bones into peaches. This spell requires 60 magic, but must first be unlocked at the mage training arena. I could have just bought a bones to peaches tablet from the grand exchange, but I decided to put in the extra effort and actually unlock the spell. And my god, was this the most boring activity I've ever done in my entire life. Apparently this spell doesn't work on worm bones. Worm? Wyrm? Wyrm? Worm? So I went to the grand exchange and bought not just worm bones, but every possible bone that I could buy. So I gathered all of the bones into my inventory so I could cast bones to peaches on each of them. And I was not expecting these results. The spell didn't just fail to work on worm bones. The spell failed on several bones. The spell only had an effect on regular bones, big bones, bat bones, burnt bones, monkey bones, and wolf bones. And on the other hand, the spell didn't even work on the superior dragon bones, dragon bones, baby dragon bones, wyvern bones, dragonoth bones, drake bones, org bones, ferric bones, zogre bones, shikahan bones, or the worm bones. Upon further research, this is because the spell simply doesn't work on any bones higher than big bones. Dragon bones currently cost around 2,368 GP. I'm assuming no one would ever want to turn these bones into a Peach that only heals 8 HP. And the prices only go up from there, so don't waste your money. Actually, you can't waste your money anyways because the bones don't, or the spell doesn't work on the bone. Anyways, you get it, you get it. The $11 crab meme was a meme created by the RuneScape community in 2018 due to an uproar caused by membership prices increasing to $11. Technically it was $10.99, but whatever. The meme was essentially the crab rave song with some text that stated controversial topics within the RuneScape community, such as no authenticator delay. Jagex didn't have a delay on turning off your two-factor authenticator, which was widely perceived as a massive security flaw. Twitter shouldn't be your customer support. Jagex had terrible customer support, and the best way to reach them was, funny enough, through Twitter and not the official Jagex support webpage, which you would still receive poor support. And of course, the raising of membership to $11 or $10.99. Yeah, whatever. You can actually go back and look at old Reddit posts from this time period and see the crab emoji spammed all over the subreddit. This is because the crab is also the zodiac sign of cancer, which we all know is a term used for something that is extremely unliked. People are essentially saying Jagex is cancerous. I'm just going to come right out and say it. This is one of those topics that I know nothing about and can't find any useful information on. The only thing I could find was this ad for a security company named Stronghold Security, which is no longer in business. I wonder if they played RuneScape. Anyways, I walked all over the place and I couldn't find any signs of a telephone. But then I found this. On the RuneScape wiki, 
At the very bottom of the page, there's a small trivia section for the Stronghold of Security. One of the bullet points says, When passing through doors in the Stronghold of Security, a faint telephone noise can be heard in the background. After cranking up my volume and listening closely, there is in fact another sound effect that plays in the background of the sound effect. You can hear it in game, but I'm going to throw it into Audacity for you and isolate it so you can hear exactly what I'm talking about. In case you didn't hear it, here it is again with just the telephone sound effect selected. Is this the sound of a telephone ringing? I don't know. It's obviously a different sound effect from the sound effect of the door opening. What do you guys think it is? Let me know in the comments below. Run energy, sometimes called stamina, is the ability to run rather than walk throughout the landscape. The energy level is displayed alongside the world map. There are multiple ways your energy can be affected, such as your agility level, energy restoring items, and of course, weight itself. Once you reach a weight of 64 kilograms, the rate that energy goes down reaches a maximum, meaning you could be carrying 500 kilograms and your energy would drain at the same rate as 64 kilograms. In simpler terms, weights greater than 64 kilograms are equivalent to 64 kilograms. Likewise, negative weights are equivalent to zero kilograms. Hey, uh, I just want to take a second to do a little wardrobe change. Give me just a moment. Oh, that's so much better. Okay, continue. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to RuneScape. Wait, it's Vscape? Oh, okay. Welcome to Vscape. Actually, I am in RuneScape, but they look the exact same, so you wouldn't have noticed the difference anyways. I was just too lazy to install Vscape. But what is Vscape? Vscape, or Videoscape, is a fully featured remake of RuneScape based on October 31st, 2007. Vscape was introduced in March of 2014 and offers many features such as a 2.25 times experience rate, a fully unlocked music player, and free membership benefits. No more paying $11 a month for membership. The current population, as of 2023, lies anywhere between 25 to 75 players, depending on what day you're playing on. During the Carnelian Rising quest in RuneScape 3, you will encounter Sarsprilla. My name is Sarsprilla. At one point, you'll have to tie her up with some twine. If the player uses a feather or any variation of the Abyssal Whip on her while she's tied up, the player will receive a message saying, RuneScape isn't that sort of fantasy game. And did I mention she's only 15 years old? Come on now, RuneScape. Elvmage was a RuneScape PKer who rose to fame after uploading YouTube videos shortly after YouTube was created. He was one of the most well-known PKers throughout 2004 through 2007. He was a skilled mage and ranger that would ice barrage his opponents and finish them off with a magic shortbow. On February 14th, 2007, Jagex decided to take action and ban Elvmage for using his YouTube videos as a method for luring players into the wilderness. It's believed that many players in Elvmage's videos were his victims of luring, simply due to the fact that they didn't fight back and we're trying to run away. Typing in all capital letters in RuneScape isn't as simple as pressing the caps lock button on your keyboard. You have to use a special alt code. Well, you can't do that anymore. Allow me to explain. Alt codes are special numerical codes typed in the numpad while simultaneously holding down the alt key on Windows computers. They still exist today, but many of them have been changed over the years. One of those being ALT-0151. This code allowed players to type in all capital letters and scream at people all day. I remember the days. There's a large selection of ALT codes out there for all sorts of fancy symbols to spruce up your RuneScape conversations, such as the squared symbol, cubed, one half, one fourth, this B thing, and my personal favorite, the upside down question mark. Mod Mark has worked for Jagex since 2003. He's a moderator as well as the creative director. Mark Donald is a joke that makes fun of Mark's weight. Thousands of people were spamming it throughout RuneScape and creating memes about it. It became such a big deal that Jagex began to permamute players that even said the word. After an update in 2019, 
A twisted bow spawn was found directly east of the cactus patch outside of the farming guild. Players could pick it up and it had a respawn time of 60 seconds. This was hot fixed 32 minutes later. Jagex added four tree stumps around the twisted bow spawn to make it unreachable even with telekinetic grab. Jagex had to turn the game offline and even perform a rollback. Once RuneScape was live again, the twisted bow spawn was removed. In reference to the glitch, a twisted bush was placed where the twisted bow spawn was located. Zora is a level 725 solo only snake boss. Players can only harm it with ranged or magic. There is some debate whether Zora is a male or female as the high priestess Zul Hars Sinka refers to Zora as a male, but the examined text of Zora's display refers to it as female. The legendary construction icon has an out of place green pixel. A poll took place asking players if the green pixel should be removed and it failed. Shortly after, an update occurred that removed the green pixel anyways. After complaints from the RuneScape community, the developers had to manually add the green pixel back onto the construction logo. Norse Code is a members-only music track released along with the Fremenic Isles in 2007. In the actual track, a secret Morse code is present. The high-pitched flute sequence spells out RuneScape. A pea hat no, not this kind of pea hat but an actual Pea hat was a joke item released in 2012 for April Fools. It was said that green pea hats were lying throughout the streets of Lumbridge, Vorok, and Falador. This deceived many players into thinking they were going to receive actual green party hats. They can now be purchased from Diango for one coin in Drainer Village. Takul is the currency of the Tsar city. Takul is literally made out of the corpses of the Tsar creatures. They use their ancestors' remains as currency so they can ensure that the ancestors remain cared for by their descendants. So when you go to the store and buy that obsidian cape you've been wanting so badly, just know you're probably using old Tsar Hertel's great-grandpa to buy it. Bot worlds were game worlds which were used for gathering players that were suspected of botting. Players that were potentially botting were moved from their chosen world to one of the two designated bot worlds, world 385 and 386. Bot worlds were short-lived because many players would find themselves being moved to bot worlds while training skills or doing repetitive tasks. No player poll was ever created to introduce bot worlds. Do you think it's possible that the Falador Massacre could have been staged? Some people throughout Reddit are suspicious whether or not Jagex and the attacker had planned the attacks to gain publicity and to create hysteria. This Redditor states, It also just happened to fall on June 6, 2006. This struck me as odd. It's thematically fitting for such a tragic event where many lost their gold and equipment, which was never reimbursed by Jagex. Whether or not it was staged, the victims were real and still lost their hard-earned equipment and gold. Do you think the Falador Massacre was a massive inside job? Tell me why or why not in the comments. The boat that transports players to and from the pest control minigame is modeled after the Higgins landing boat, which was used by allied troops on D-Day during World War II. It was large enough to hold a platoon-sized element of around 36 people. Troops would generally exit the boat by charging through the boat's lowered bow ramp, which also occurs in RuneScape. Have you ever been exploring through RuneScape and you come across these dark, mysterious voids? These are referred to as the unknown. These vast endlessnesses are displayed as black areas on the map. There are many locations where you can look into the unknown, such as pest control, player-owned houses, and the Caridian Desert. 
The Old Knight was an American RuneScape player that was ranked within the top 10 in the early years of RuneScape. He was constantly competing for rank 1 with Zezima and Liliuffy88. In 2006, the Old Knight held a party for maxing his account. Just weeks later, it was claimed that the Old Knight passed away from a battle with cancer. Although his wife and sister allegedly confirmed his death, some people still believe he was still alive due to his account showing signs of activity. The scale theory is a confirmed theory that the world of Gylenor in-game is not a literal representation of how the lore of Gylenor represents itself. This may be confusing at first. Uh, how do I say this? The universe of RuneScape lore is scaled down to make managing the video game of RuneScape more simple. For example, the city of Warrock that you and I both see in-game is no larger than a small town. However, in-game texts suggest that Vorok is a sprawling capital city with tens of thousands of residents. Respectively, you and I both know that in-game, Vorok is way too small of a town to house that many people. There's really no point for the developers to include every single citizen and their houses. It's just unnecessary work. So that's where scale theory comes in. RuneScape, the game we all know and love, uses a scaled down version of the world for practicality purposes. Another good example is that you and I can walk from Lumbridge to Falador in just a few minutes. However, in the story of RuneScape, the two towns are further apart and can take hours to walk from one another. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching. This video was a bit of a passion project of mine and a lot of time and effort was put into it. If you like my content or want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot. I want to know what your favorite part of the video was, so please leave a comment below. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cavity out.